Hi guys, welcome back to Mastering Python. Today we're going to look at variables. Now, variables are essential when we work with data, when we want to manipulate and store data. They are a key building block in any type of programming. Now, you can think of variables as boxes that store different type of data. You can have a box called age, and in there, for example, is the number 37. You can have a, a box called name, and in there, there's the name Gunnar. All these different boxes that store data that you can then easily access, you can easily manipulate and, and store again. Using variables to store your data allows you to write much more reusable and dynamic code. So, without much further ado, let's jump into VS Code. Creating variables is super straightforward. Now, we're going to start by creating a new file, which we're going to call variables. .py, remember .py, so that we have something that we can work with. Now, to define a variable, it's as easy as giving it a name. So we can start, for example, age, and then an equal sign, and the value we want to give it. So remember, age is the box, 37 is the value. And it's easy as that. We have now defined a variable. We can go print age. We've seen the print command. Let's open a terminal, view, terminal, and here we run python variable.py. Let's go. And here we go. We see our data, the number 37 that we're storing in this variable age, is printed to screen. Now, it's really important to note that this equal sign here, age equal 37, does not mean the same as it does in a mathematical sense. You're not testing for equality. What you're doing is you're assigning the value 37 to the variable called age. Right, there are a few rules and conventions around how we name variables. Variables start with the letters A to Z, so either lowercase or uppercase, or an underscore. Anything else, a number, is not allowed as the first character of a variable name. Also, when we have variables that are longer, so for example, if we write first name, we tend to write first and then an underscore in the second name. So in this case, we can say Usain. And this is called snake case. So we separate the individual words by underscores. So if, for example, if we try to create a variable called first name, you see it already lights up in red because it's an error. It can't start with a number. So only with letters or an underscore. We could, for example, go first name with an underscore is gonna, and that would be perfectly fine. We have four main built-in data types in Python. First of all, we've got integers. Now, integers are whole numbers. So anything like minus 1, 12, 1,975, 69, any whole number that doesn't have a decimal fraction. Next, we have floating point numbers or float, which are numbers with the decimal point. So for example, pi 3.14 is a decimal number or minus 12.44 would be a floating point number or float. We have a type called Boolean. Now, Boolean can either hold a true value or a false value. So it's one of these two. So it's either true or false. It's often used when we're testing for conditions. So um, is somebody older than 18? If this is true, then they're an adult. And then finally, we have strings. Now, you've seen strings before in our Hello World program. So hello world is a string. It's a sequence of characters that are encased by quotes, whether they're single quotes or double quotes. Learning Python is fun in quotes would also be a string, right? So let's put some of these into practice. First of all, we have our integer. So we've defined age. What did we have next? So next we had say time 9.58. This is a floating point number. It has the decimal point. We have our string Usain and as a Boolean we can have is retired and he is retired. He's no longer running. So of course we're talking about Usain Bolt. Now we can print all of these out. So we can print the age. We can also print the time. We can print the first name and we can print whether he is retired. When we run the script, you can see all of this printed out. So the age 37, his best time, first name and true. You see this Boolean value here. He is retired. So this is true. You see here that I used quite descriptive variable names. And this is a convention in Python that we use names that describe what the data that they hold. I could have, for example, written something like this. X equals 37 and Y equals 9.85. 
But if you came back a week later, you definitely wouldn't have any idea what it is that we're writing about. So it's very good practice to write descriptive variable names. When we define our variables, so for example, age, time, first name is retired, Python automatically attributes it a type, whether it's integer, float, or string, or Boolean. Now, if we want to know what type Python assigned the variable, we can simply use the type function. And the way type works is you'd simply put type and then the variable that you want to know the type of. So in this case, I'm just repurposing the print functions that we had before so that I don't have to type it all out again. There we go. So we're asking it to print the type of variable that age is, the type of variable that time is, type of variable that first name is and is retired. So let's run the script. There we go. So don't worry about the class and the formatting, but here you can see that age is an integer, time is a float, the first name is a string, and finally is retired is a boolean. If we want to make absolutely sure, we can also check with the function called isInstance. And isInstance takes two parameters. So first of all, the variable that we want to check. So for example, time. And we want to check whether time is of type float. We already printed it out here, but in the program itself, we can check whether it's of type float. So let's run it. There you go. So true. This returns a Boolean. It's either true or false. And in this case, it is a float. If we went here and we asked whether it was an integer and run this, we get false because it's a float and not an integer. Now, the great thing about programming in Python is that you can reassign values to your different variables. So imagine Usain Bolt in a couple of years time comes out of retirement. So now his age is 39. It's no longer 37 and he's no longer retired. So is retired is now false. So if we're taking his information and printing it out again, so we want the first name and then we want the age, the time and is retired. Let me just comment this. So remember, control forward slash makes a comment out of this. And now we're just printing all of these and we can use the separator that we've learned by putting a hyphen in between them. When we run this, there we go. It's saying he's 39, this is his time and he's no longer retired. Now compared to languages like C++ or Java, Python is a dynamically typed language. And one of the things that this means is that you can change the type of variable that certain variables hold. So in this case, the time was a floating point number. It was float 9.58. What if we now change time to lightning fast? Lightning fast. So he's come out of retirement super, super fast. All of a sudden time becomes a string. It's no longer float. This would give you an error in C++ and Java, but in languages like Python and JavaScript, this is perfectly fine. So if we now take the print command, copy it down here and run our script again, you see it now also prints the lightning fast because time has become a string which holds this sequence of characters. This is called dynamic typing. You have to be careful with dynamic typing, but it also has great advantages. Another cool thing that we can do in Python is make multiple assignments at the same time. So if we want somebody's first name, and the last name, we can make them in the same assignment. So here we can have Usain, come on, Bolt. So it will take the first value, assign it to the first variable, then take the second value, assign it to the second variable. And then if we print first name, last name, you see, it's assigned first name and last name to these values. So you can assign multiple variables at the same time. Now, where this becomes super cool is that you can swap variables in one line. So if we want first name, last name, all of a sudden to become last name, first name. So it takes the value of the last name, puts it into first name, and then it takes the value of the original first name and puts it into last name. So let's try this and then print it all out again. You see? And now we've swapped them around. So first name is Bolt, last name is Usain. In this case, it doesn't make any sense because his first name is Usain, his last name is Bolt, but you can swap variables, values with each other. In some cases, you want variables to be constant. You don't want them to change. In this case, the distance that Usain Bolt ran, 
these 9.58 in. So we can make a constant distance and we call it 100. Now you see I wrote distance in all capitals. This is the convention in Python. If you want a variable that doesn't change throughout your program, you write it in all capitals. Now, Python doesn't enforce this. Technically, we could go and change this constant, but it's more of a convention that when somebody else comes to your code and he sees a variable all in capitals, he knows or she knows that this means don't change the code. And also when you see a variable all in capitals, don't change it. Now we can also ask for input from the user. Yeah, we can ask the user, for example, what was their best time that they've run? And the command we use for this is called input. So we write input and then a little message that you want to write. What was your best time? Question mark. Now, if we just write this, it will print out the message. It will ask us for a prompt, but it doesn't store the information anywhere. So we're going to give this a variable as well. Best time equals to input. So we can define our variable with the equal sign, but then define it on the fly what the value will be. So in this case, what was your best time? The user types in a value and this then becomes best time. So if we then print best time, let me just take all of this and comment it out. So we have best time input. What was your best time? I run the script. It asks me what was your best time? My best time was probably 22 seconds say 0.58 okay and it prints it out there we go so we printed the time we've stored our value now let's take what we've learned before we can then go print type of best time we want to know how does python store the information that we've put in so what was your best time it was 22.558 and you can see it stores it as a string now if we want to manipulate this value if we want to subtract some time or we want to add some time we can't do this to a string we need to convert it to an integer and luckily in python there are functions that help you do this so there are functions um, str which converts to a string we have int which converts to an integer and we have float you guessed it it converts to a float we're taking this input from the user as a string and we want to convert it. So in this case, we'll want the best time as a floating point number rather than a string. So we can go best time equals float and then the value that we get from the user, which is also called best time. And then if we print the type of best time, okay, so let me get rid of this. We're getting the best time from the user. We're asking for some input from them. They type the input, we save it as best time, and then we're converting it to a float because we saw earlier it was a string. We convert it to a float and then we print out its type. So let it run. See best time, 22.58. There we go. And we've now converted it to a float and now we can change it up. In this case, best time equals best time minus 0 0.58 because I trained very hard and I shaved half a second of my time. And we can print best time again. So let's run this. My time of 22.58. There we go. It's converted to a float. And now my best time is 22 because we've taken these 0.58 seconds of my time. One very last type of variable that you sometimes see in code is what's called the underscore variable. The underscore variable is really a throwaway variable. It's when we need a placeholder for something that we don't really care about. Instead of giving it a name, we just call it underscore and then we forget about it. It's something that we don't use. One example would be um, when we're looping over something and we don't care what the index of this loop is, but we just want to repeat something five times. We would use this underscore, but we'll get to that when we get to, to loops and conditionals, but just for you to be aware. Right, and there you have it, variables. We've seen that you can take data, you can store it in these different boxes. We have integers, floating points, we have Boolean variables, we have strings, and we can convert between them. We can get information from the user. There are certain naming conventions. Variables have to start either with a letter or an underscore. You should use snake case, so separate words with an underscore, and name your variables with useful names that make sense later. I hope this gave you a nice introduction into variables in Python. Next time we're going to look at strings in much, much more detail, what you can do with strings, a very exciting type of variable before moving on to loops and conditionals. So 
Try all of this out before you progress. Make sure that you understand how to define variables, how to declare them, how to change them, and I'll see you in the next video.